This, what we're talking about here is, and I know this is review from the last few sessions, um, but we really are talking about Microsoft, the Copilot in Microsoft 365. And right now, um, this functionality works, especially in Teams, but we're gonna, we're expecting more. Um, Copilot is basically the artificial intelligence uh, assistant inside of Microsoft 365. And uh, there's, and the way that it works, you can see kind of along the top here, right? You've got your tenants content is all getting pulled into the semantic index, which is a search index that's organized by the semantic meanings of the words rather than by text. And then Copilot itself, where it says there, Copilot on the screen, actually there's a few components in there, including a large language model, but also an orchestration layer that's going to uh, consult with the semantic index and the Microsoft graph to pull your content in in real time, feed it along with the user's prompts into the large language model, and then return responses such that um, the user's data or the customer's data never actually goes into the large language model. It's not, it's not used to train or in any way um, update the large language model with somebody's content. It, this is done always in each request. So there's two ways to extend this beyond the content inside of Microsoft 365. One is graph connectors, and um, I, I know Waldeck demoed these a couple of weeks ago, and I think Aicha also uh, did a did a Python example of this last week. And um, so this is the idea here is to just add your content into that semantic index. So everything is um, kind of brought right in to the semantic index. And from there, it kind of, from a Copilot perspective, works the same as if you had a bunch of Word documents or, or something else inside of your content. And so that's really nice in scenarios where you uh, don't necessarily have a lot of real-time updates because it takes a little while for that stuff to get indexed. Um, but maybe you want to be more semantic about it, if you will. Um, I'll give an example of that later. Um, the other option, of course, and also where I guess you don't mind bringing your business data right into your tenant, into your Microsoft 365 tenant, and you can put permissions on them and things. What I'm going to talk about today is a plugin, and this Northwind sample is a plugin. So rather than consulting the semantic index in this case, Copilot is going to call your plugin in real time. And so this, of course, has the advantage of being real time as well as allowing you more control over interactions with the user. You get to build an adaptive card, which can provide details and also even allow users to uh, to update data and things like that. And so I'll show all of that. So let's just, we're just gonna focus on the plugin uh, model today. Now there's a few different ways to build uh, plugins. So um, the first one is what I'm going to show, which is to write something with code. And usually Teams Toolkit makes this a lot easier. Uh, the most mature way to do this, I think, is, is really the message extension. So you build a message extension for Teams, and I'll show that briefly. And then it works also as a, as a, a plugin. Another uh, option is, um, you can build Power Platform connectors or Logic App connectors. So there's a huge ecosystem here. However, in order to do this, you need to be an currently you need to be an ISV uh, who is certified in the Power Platform to build connectors in and put them in the store. So this is going to be more useful, I think, for ISV products uh, initially, at least, than um, building something for inside of your company. And then if you're a low-code developer, you can also build connect, uh, plugins with Copilot Studio. So um, that is another option. Um, I don't know if it has all the capabilities that I'm gonna show though. So I think it's something that's it's growing and improving and is certainly a great path for the low-code uh, audience. So let's, I'm gonna start by sort of reviewing what is a Teams message extension. And so here I am. And I'm going to ask Rabia to um, to sort of update, uh, to check on the inventory of one of our products. And so what's going on here is that 
you know, Rabia is, uh, and let me see if I can get rid of this thing at the bottom. So apologies for that. That should not really be there. Anyway, display settings. All right. Um, I guess I'm just going to live with it for now. So I want Rabia to check the inventory on this item. And I really don't want her to have to go find the item in our in our ERP system based on I might spell the name wrong or something who knows so really it's much better to use a message extension and that's what we have here notice that there's three tabs at the top of northwind inventory there's product inventory discounts and revenue so there's three different ways that she can search or that i can search so i'm going to go ahead and search for chai and there's chai and so notice down at the bottom i've got i'm highlighting uh, the query. So I basically got my log file showing. And that you can see that I typed in the product name equals chai, and it found exactly one product. So now I can click on this, bring it into the chat, and send this off. And there we have it. And now here's where I can take action, um, where you can actually uh, go ahead and in this case, uh, maybe Rabia discovered another case of chai that we didn't know we had. So she's going to update the, the stock level uh, to 375. And she could do this on her phone. So this is a real time saver. It eliminates, it, it minimizes errors because if there were two products similarly worded, I was forced to pick the right one initially. And these actions are, um, you know, based on the adaptive card model. So it's something you may be familiar with. Again, you can follow along in the log file messages at the bottom. Um, so let's take a look at the app manifest. So if you've been following uh, these calls, you probably know that Teams apps have a manifest. And basically, you could host it anywhere on the internet, but you want to use the manifest to sort of tell Teams, hey, that here's where this thing is. In this case, um, we're actually going to rely pretty heavily on the, uh, the description and the name. Uh, because these are really going to be used now, not only by humans, but also by Copilot to know what does this plugin do and what does it really, you know, what does it really uh, offer to users. So very long and detailed description. You're advised to even mention in that description that this is working in Copilot. And then here is under Compose Extensions, which is the old name for message extensions. Um, here is the definition of those message extensions that you saw in the in the little pop up there where I was composing the message to Rabia. So this one has four uh, has three different commands that correspond to those three different tabs that you saw. And if I go to the first one, I'm actually going to skip the first one because uh, we'll get back to that because it's a little bit fancier than the others. Um, but here's an example discount search. And this allows you to search for discounted products by category. And so you can type in a category name and get back products that are discounted within that category. So it's it's nice, but it's also a bit limited because if I wanted to search for discount products by some other criteria, can't really do it because the only uh, parameter I'm providing is category name. And then if I go down a little bit further uh, to revenue search, you'll see that I can look for things by revenue. What was cool about this is I I was writing the code in the backing service and I'm kind of lazy by nature, you know, so I didn't really want to try to think of all of the ways that somebody could enter a range of revenue in a text field. So I decided to just accept the word high or low or a range in this exact format. And what's cool is that Copilot is smart enough to uh, take whatever the user typed and convert it into this format. So if they say, you know, more than 50K, it's going to put 50000 dash and then, you know, and, and thus I can just do a JavaScript split on the on the text field and get back the, the upper and lower range of that. So really simple. And it was great that all of a sudden I'm starting to think, oh, maybe I'm just going to program this thing in English. And what's what was really interesting, I don't have the demo, but um, my teammate Tomomi uh, demonstrated this in Japanese and it actually figured out it prompt. She prompted in Japanese. The response came back in Japanese, but 
it, it was able to correlate these descriptions with the Japanese prompt because it's all semantic, right? It's not synth it's not based on keywords at all. So let's go up to this first example again. And um, I have five parameters here. So that's what makes this more po powerful. This is going to filter similar to what you might filter in a catalog website, right? Maybe you're on uh, looking at products and you want things that fit more than one detail, right? And every so every time you click, you're adding, no, I only want things in a certain color. I only want things in a certain size and it's narrowing it down. And that's how these work. So I could search by name. I could search also by category name, by inventory status, supplier city and stock query. And if I say, you know, things that are in the uh, meats category from London, it will filter on those two things. So this gives Copilot the ability to do much more interesting queries. So let's take a look at what how this works in Copilot itself. So please find Northwind products with more than 50K revenue along with any ad campaigns. And this is the real power of this, right? Like you could build a custom Copilot, your own chatbot that would do the uh, inventory part. But here, I actually said, give me information along with ad campaigns. Well, there's no ad campaigns in the Northwind database, but they're in SharePoint. So I have documents from these three ad campaigns. It went and looked up the products in the inventory database, and then went and looked in SharePoint for ad campaign documents. And you can see here that, yeah, it found the Oktoberfest promotion, um, and and the uh, for a product I can't probably pronounce very well, and April in Paris for uh, Cote de Blay and stuff like that. So uh, it's that's really where a lot of the power lies is in having something that knows all of the content inside of uh, or has access to all the content inside of your Microsoft 365 and your line of business system, because users are always juggling these things, right? So let's look at another example. Uh, and yeah, you can see this is this is wisdom here, is right. You want to hover over these little reference marks and make sure that it's not hallucinating or something. It should be showing you the reference to the actual document. Um, so let's do another example. I'm going to type new chat, and this is this is a best practice for for teaching end users really. And you've probably done this in ChatGPT and elsewhere. Um, these these uh, queries, these prompts are kind of chained together, so each one can build on the previous prompt, which is great until you want to really change the subject and it still keeps talking about the previous topic. So the way to kind of clear it out and say we're starting a whole new conversation is to type new chat. So there's new chat, and now I'm going to do another example. Um, check Northwind inventory for dairy products low on stock. Show a table and reference the details for each product. So this is pretty cool because you can see that it figured out down at the bottom, you can see category name is dairy and inventory status is low stock. And so that filtered it down to about four, to exactly four products. And, um, you know, you can see what they are. It formatted the table. It was also, I thought, pretty smart in that it figured out that the relevant um, data columns for a stock, something about inventory stock, was units in stock, units on order, and reorder level. So I didn't have to tell it that. Um, now it's not always going to be perfect, but there is some there is some artificial intelligence in this. And now what I notice is that we uh, have not ordered any camembert. We're below the reorder level. What went wrong? So I'm going to go ahead and fix that right now. So by hovering over the reference, I get to that same adaptive card that you saw me use inside of. Um, the Teams message extension. It's the same code. And now I can go ahead and, and order another 50 units from right there. Now, when we say that Copilot for Microsoft 365, that plugins can take action on data, right now at this point in time, that means that you can have an adaptive card that is displayed that takes action. If I ask Copilot, please order more Camembert, right at this moment in time, it would not be able to do it. Um, this is an evolving space. Taking action and updating data is something you want to be careful about. So at this point in time, you're, we're sort of mitigating that by having to go through the adaptive card. And again, you can see that that, that happened in the back end by my log file. 
Now, what's on my mind here is that, you know, I really wish I could. Um, I'm wondering if there was any delivery issues, then maybe that's why we're running low on stock. And so I asked it to draft an email uh, asking about delivery issues. So what's cool about this is it was able to figure out that each one of those products had a supplier. And then it actually worded the uh, email about these suppliers rather than the specific products. Now, someday, maybe it would be nice if this would actually go into Outlook and write the email for me there. But again, at this moment in time, these plugins work in Teams, in the M365 Copilot in Teams. And so I'm gonna have to copy and paste that, but it still saves me time over having to write it myself. And uh, I think it does a fairly nice job. So um, so now let's take a look at, at the code. And I think I might be out of time actually already. Am I out of time? Yes, you are. <laughs> oh, well, then I will point you to the code. I will point you to yes. the code and say that all of everything you've seen here is here in Ignite23-Lab. So aka.ms slash Ignite23-Lab. And if you go in there, you will see uh, all of the instructions on how to set this up. This is a very informal lab, so it's just a set of readme files. And yeah, you can come in here and it will walk you through everything that you need to set this up yourself. And I apologize for not uh, going faster in the demo so that I could show more code, but uh, you get to see the manifest, which I think is probably the most important part. 